Hi there, welcome. So glad you're here. Hey, listen, would you open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6? Matthew chapter 6, very familiar passage. Um, a few, like it feels like forever, we've been starting on this, this uh, series called uh, Kingdom of God. Uh, and overall title, arching title is 2021, Kingdom of God 2021. Uh, we talked about the Kingdom of God and what that looked like. And um, you can go back uh, uh, you know, on our Facebook because it has all of the videos listed there and backtrack if you would like. Um, but for now, I want to launch off with just a kind of a little bit of a, a refresher. And then I want to I talk a little bit about uh, that very simple verse yet. It has great significance for, as I see it, uh, beginning to build a culture, uh, a kingdom culture in our life, in our home, uh, in our church, as well as in our community. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to be able to do that. Let's just pray, could we? Father, I love you and thank you for the honor and the privilege of being with this, this group of people. I pray uh, your presence. I pray... God, your anointing um, that would just clear the path of perception that we could be able to perceive these things through the guidance of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I just pray that uh, each word that is of you and, and is yours, oh God, that you would just inscribe it into, into uh, every heart and every mind, that we would be a people that are who are called by your name but we live in your name and by your power and your strength and so as we step into this a little bit more and as we begin to build a process uh, a, a journey into uh, establishing kingdom culture uh, father help us strengthen us uh, keep us focused and we're are, we are sure to give you all of the praise and the honor and the glory for it's in jesus name Amen and amen. A couple of weeks ago, actually three or four weeks ago, almost like eternity ago, I kind of uh, kind of gave you a um, a kind of some definitions. Uh, number one, kingdom of God, basic definition. There's so much more, and we could go into it, but uh, time doesn't permit us to do this. Uh, but for for shortness and for quickness and for just clarity of where we're at, where we're going as a as a church, as a community, as a, an online community. Um, let me just give you these. Uh, the kingdom of God, it is that which we wholeheartedly, without hesitation, submit ourselves to, we become. Let me just allow that just to settle for just a moment because the implication is, is the, I should say, the, the fulfillment is attributed directly to the action, the action words. I'll give you an example. Uh, the kingdom of God is that which we wholeheartedly, that's, that's an action word, wholeheartedly, um, without hesitation, that's an action word, um, submit ourselves to, okay? So that which we wholeheartedly, by the way, the word heart in the scriptures is not, not the muscle so much that we, we, we kind of have given it as the definition. But, but heart in the scriptures, in the, the, the mind of the Greeks, was, is, is that, that whole person, the, the mind, the thoughts, the, the emotions, everything is is incorporated into that word heart. So it's not just our heart in the physical sense, uh, in the Valentine sense, if you will, uh, but it is really about you as a whole person. So, so when we say that which we wholeheartedly, uh, we are saying that which we are, are taking everything that we have without hesitation, that is without holding anything back and submitting it submitting it to now that to obviously is to whom we're we're, we're surrendering to it is, if it's not jesus it's something else or it's someone else you are you you are you are given yourself to something and that something plays a huge role in your life because the final part of this statement is we become 
we become what we love. We become what we do, we, what we set our, our, our thoughts, our affections, our entire being, our whole heart without hesitation we give ourselves. We become those things. Those things become, not, not that we start looking like them so much. And some things, maybe they do. But, 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 but when, we, when we give ourselves to, to that something, uh, we begin to take on the, the characteristics of that something, whatever it is. It could be a false god, it's an idol. Most many of those things are. Uh, it can be a person. It can be it can be your 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 job where you become, you know, um, a workaholic. It could be alcoholism. It could be drugs. It could be sex. It can be all of those things because when you give yourself to something, they become the feeder the primary feeder in your life. So your personality begins to be de- begins to be developed around that thing that you give yourself to. See, so, so the kingdom of God can be the kingdom of God, big G God as in Father, Creator, Holy God, or it can be the kingdom of little G God, me, myself, I, the world, the things of this world, materialism, uh, whatever we give ourselves to, um, that becomes, that our personality begins to take on some of those traits. Um, I remember a number of years ago, there was a, a, I was a Elam, and one of the most influential and, and, and powerhouses at Elam was a, a brother by the name of Brother Paul Joe. And, uh, and he was just amazing, amazing teacher, amazing. I mean, this man was unstoppable. He did things that were just humanly not possible because he heard from God. He was obedient to God and he fulfilled God's will. And God did this stuff, all of these things through him. He started churches in Africa. I mean, just, it goes on and on and on and on. But, but brother Joe had certain, uh, character traits uh, that were really his and, and should have only been his. And, uh, and about the, the second year of being under his influence, uh, there, were, there were those who literally um, were really incredibly followers. They felt like if they could walk like him and strut like him across the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the stage or the platform, or if they could uh, say certain words that he would say, um, that somehow there would be that anointing drip that would fall that that was his would fall on them that they themselves would be. Uh, in fact, we we used to tell we actually in our dorm rooms without you know much fair and fair we would call them uh, little Joes, <laughs> and uh, and and that that's all that's not always bad man. Listen, we should if there's someone that is good and righteous, we should desire and inspire to be uh, to be to take on that that life and that person. But but when it's infused and it's and we are so totally focused on it, then everything else gets shoved away. And and by the way, that includes God. That includes your relationship your relationship with God. And so I just want to to lay that out for you, um, that which we uh, wholeheartedly, without hesitation, submit ourselves to, we actually do become. It's just, and that's just the nature of creation, and that's in our humanness. We 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 are attracted to things that we we love and we like and we value the most, or we would want the most, and we take those things as though they're own, our own. We suit ourselves in those things, and many times they'll turn around and bite us because if it's not born on the inside, uh, the outside uh, uh, the outside is thin as a skin. So we'll leave that there. So, and here's here's a definition. Let me just kind of build around and read. And this we, we talked a little bit about this, but um, the culture of the kingdom. So what what is that whole thing about culture? Uh, the cultural di- dictionary says this. It's the sum of attitudes, customs, and beliefs that distinguishes one group of people from another. Culture is transmitted through language, material objects, ritual, institutions, art, 
uh, from one generation to the next. Now that really is more on the physical sense, but there's also a spiritual aptitude or spiritual side of this thing. And that is, is that, um, that culture is, is the, the building of the, some of those attitudes. Um, and when, but, but the kingdom culture, the king of God culture is where those things are taken from, from father, from his word through the exposure of uh, ourselves uh, in the presence of God. Um, and, it, and, and all of that, it, it begins to, to nurture something else. We become like him uh, when we submit wholeheartedly, unreservedly uh, to him. Culture is defined by two basic terms. And I covered this in a, in a few sessions before. It says this, number one, It's by the one who rules and reigns, his personality, heart, and will is is readily revealed through his people. We begin to look like him. The image of Christ begins to take form in us. Oh, no, it's not that we grow beard and we get long hair. And for those that don't have hair, you get hair. No, 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 no. That's that's for the day when you you get to before Jesus, because that's where everything is perfect and everybody has a full head of hair. Okay. Just saying, (laughs) sorry, just had to throw that one in. So it's by the one who rules and reigns, his personality, heart, and will is readily revealed through his people. We become like him. Number two, by the way, very, by the very people who live and dwell under the one who rules, which is the king. The people's lifestyle are directly influenced influence collectively by the one in whom they dwell, live, and have their being. Did you get that? So it's influenced by the person, that was number one, who rules and reigns. His personality becomes theirs. The, the way they think he becomes theirs. And secondly, it's by the very people who live and dwell under, this, under the king, the one we're talking about is Jesus. Um, the people's lifestyles are directly influenced. Can I just tell you, I'm just, I'm going to be straight with you. You cannot be born again and not change. You cannot be a kingdom kid, a kingdom man or woman of God if if you're not changing. Changing doesn't mean we become perfect. Changing means we are constantly we are constantly evolving by the work of the Holy Spirit and the word of God and the person of God in our life. It we we cannot say that we are Christian and not change. In other words, if I if I still do the things that I did before I started uh, hanging out with Jesus and uh, coming to going to church or whatever it is that I do on the on an outward appearance, if if it is not my life is not um, submitted and subjected by way of first coming to Him and being saved, being born again, that's the place of beginnings. The place of beginnings is when, when we say to Jesus, come into my life, I, I submit myself, I understand that I'm a sinner and that I cannot save myself and I humbly submit myself self, and repent to you. Come and change me. And you have to be changing. Again, you're not perfect, but you're constantly changing. Uh, what I used to do and how I used to feel, I no longer do and I no longer feel the way that I do. There are things that, 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 that agitate me because of more of a righteousness and not because of a self-righteousness. Because in his kingdom, when I come as he so directed, unless a man is born anew, he cannot I'm just saying it. Now, listen, there's all kinds of teachings. This is probably one that you would say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go someplace else. You, just, you can go and hear all you want. But I'm telling you, I'm warning you that this is the gospel, and it is the gospel truth. When Jesus is truly in your life, you are changing your attitudes, your aptitude, your <laughs> emotions, your feelings, your just everything is beginning to change. And some things really are going to come through a battle. You're going to go through the squeezing, the testing, the fires and all of that. And we'll be talking a lot about that because all of that is to, to build you up. It doesn't feel like you're being built up, but that's a whole nother session. And we're, we're going to be dealing with that. 
as kingdom as we build into kingdom culture. But now today, I want to just leave this with you, and that is, listen, unless Jesus is king and Lord over all of your kingdom, the entire person, you, 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 you have reason to be unsettled when you're facing death. And I want to encourage you. So let me just take a moment, and we're going to be opening this up even more so uh, because of, 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 I just want to, I want to, want, really want to do it. I'm going to read it out of a couple of different translations. Matthew chapter 6. I'm just going to stick with 33, and we can build out of the context of it and then build, uh, build it as, as how it relates to us. And here's what it says. Matthew 6, 33 says this. King James, New King James, it says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble for sure. Amen? Well, look at what it says in the Amplified Version. So it begins to pull it out a little bit so that we can kind of kind of get this. And, and, and I'll, again, I'll be referring back to this perhaps in the next session. But seek, that means to aim at this and strive after. First of all, his kingdom and his righteousness. That is, his way of doing and being right. That's <laughs> As a mouthful right there. there. His way of doing, righteousness, his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. And then all these things will be added together, uh, be, be taken together, will be given you besides. I'm going to read one more passage and I'm going to talk about just a minute and then we're going to, we're going to, we'll pick this up um, in the following week. I'm going to read this one right now out of the Passion Bible, Passion Translation. It says, So above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom and the righteousness that proceeds from Him. Then all these less important things will be given to you abundantly. And that is this what, it, what the text is saying is our first priority is to seek first Him. Seek first him. He is the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the kingdom. He was in the flesh. Now it's in the spirit. And in that, as we are beginning to, 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 to uh, build a culture, a kingdom culture, a culture that is lifestyle, life impacting, and also life outreach, reaching to others. So that people can see and taste and tuss, ta uh, taste that, that this thing is for real. It all begins right here. It, the, the processes of change begin when we, when we take and set our everything, our affections, our thoughts. When we, we learn how to meditate, when, we, when we, we walk in obedience, when we take all these tools that help us to draw closer to Him, because that's exactly ultimately His desire to draw close, for us to draw close to Him, and He will draw close to us. But it begins with the seeking, because the seeking is the giving of our attention. Okay, the seeking is the, and, and we're gonna, we're gonna, I want to settle on that next next week. Uh, but seeking is is imperative to our ongoing growing spiritually. That our lives will fulfill the will and the purposes that God has for us, and that we will see Him do marvelous things through us, not just through the preacher, not just through the prophet, not just through the apostle, but through the body of Christ. Because for such, all of those offices have been called so that you could do the works of the ministry. I so love you. I thank you for these moments together. And I really do look forward to, uh, to going and growing as we are building kingdom culture uh, in our life and lifestyle today. God's richest blessings to you until we meet again. Amen and amen.